Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and the video you're about to watch is a tutorial video on ventilation for gas appliances. Now this video has been designed for trainee gas engineers and gas engineers who are resitting their ACS reassessment. So if you're a non-gas registered engineer then this video might not be any use to you. But why don't you go to our YouTube channel and have a look at some of our videos there because you might find them interesting. So, hopefully this video is going to be good, but we'll see you soon. Now to aid us in this task of working out ventilation, there are certain documents we're going to be using to help us. These documents include and are the British Standards, so BS 5440 Part 1. We've also got BS 5440 Part 2. We've got Building Regulations Document F. We've got the Gas Industry um, Safe Installation and Use Regulations. And what the main thing is, we've got the Manufacturer's Instructions. This is the main one we will always refer to. Now, to aid you guys to understand what the hell I'm going on about for the new guys into the industry, I'm going to be talking about um, flueless, open flued, room sealed appliances, I'm going to be talking about natural draft, I'm going to be talking about fan flu, high water concept, loads of different technical jargon. So to help you with that, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at all the different types of flue systems and different appliances you could come across. So let's have a look at those now. first appliances we're going to be looking at are flueless appliances. Flueless means there is no chimney or flue coming off this appliance that terminates outside the building. That means from this cooker all the products of combustion from burning gas which is carbon dioxide and water vapour would come into the room. So we have to, other than ventilation, be looking at the size of the room too but we'll, we'll look at that later. So the first flueless appliance is a cooker. Let's have a look at the others. Now the next flueless appliance is a hob. Some of you might be saying, ah, it's the same as a cooker. Well, technically where ventilation is concerned, it's the same as a cooker. But a hob is also a flueless appliance, meaning again, it's products of combustion, carbon dioxide and water vapour would be coming into the room rather than exiting out through a flue or a chimney. Hob, flueless appliance. flueless uh, appliance we're going to be looking at is this it's a flueless space heater now the reason why this is not a fire it's a space heater technically it is a fire but it's a flueless space heater because it has a catalytic converter on the top here that means its products of combustion enter the room again they don't go up the chimney okay so again you've got your carbon dioxide and water vapor going through the catalytic converter so again this needs ventilation but it's slightly different than the cooker. So this requires different type of ventilation. Technically it's the same ventilation, but different way we size it. That makes sense. Anyway, we're going to be looking at this more closely on how we're going to do the ventilation, but it is different to a cooker. Let's have a look at the next appliance. The next appliance we're looking at is this. It's a boiler, but it's an open fluid boiler. That means its products of combustion now exit the room via a chimney or a flue. It used to be chimneys and flues and flue. Anyway, via a chimney or a flue. Now then, it gets its air from combustion from within the room, like a flueless appliance does. So we need ventilation for this appliance too. It gets its air in through here and um, for combustion. So it's products of combustion, it's carbon dioxide and water vapour now exit via a chimney or a flue. So let's say first look at an open flue appliance. Next up, open flue appliance is this fire space heater. This is a radiant fire. Again, this is connected to a chimney. Again, the products of combustion go out 
uh, the room through the chimney and air for combustion comes from within a room. Loads of different types of fires, space eaters, this is a radiant type, open flued. Next appliances we're going to be looking at are room sealed appliances. Room sealed appliances means they get their air from, from combustion from outside, not inside. There's loads of different types of room sealed appliances, but there are also two sections. We have high water content and low water content. Now this is a floor standing conventional boiler, which is a high water content boiler. That means it gets uh, a lot of water in there and it's a cast iron heat exchanger. Now this gives off lots of heat, lots of radiant heat. So we need to make sure we've got ventilation for cooling if this was installed in a cupboard or a, um, a compartment. Again, we'll look at those later. Whereas the new high efficient condensing boilers, which are room sealed appliances, but are low water content boilers, do not require um, combustion air for uh, inside because it all comes outside. And it also doesn't need air for cooling. At the moment, I can't think of any brand new boiler you can buy which requires ventilation air for cooling for condensing boilers. I might be wrong, but I doubt it. So that's, we'll have a look at the flues around the back and that will show you the difference between an open fluid appliance and a room sealed appliance. Let's have a look around the back. Now this is the flue from the boiler we've just been looking at. Now remember guys, this is a gas sensor. This flue should be flued outside so before you say oh it's flued inside it should be flued outside I'm just showing this as demonstration purposes to show you the different types of uh, open flue, flueless and room sealed. So this is classed as a room sealed appliance so this bit here is where the products of combustion come out and this is where our air goes in for combustion. Now this type of flue is called a um, natural draft flue so there is no fan on this at all. It's just aid of natural draft. So the products of combustion coming out of here will come out at the same as the, as the air going in. So this is a balanced fluid, room sealed, uh, natural draft appliance. Now this is another room sealed appliance, another uh, natural draft, another balanced fluid appliance, but this is off a space heater this time. So again, like the other one, this is where our air goes in for combustion. This is where our products of combustion come out. Again, guys, this needs to be installed outside. So products combustion out, air in, room sealed, natural draft, balanced fluid appliance. And the last one I want to look at now is this fan fluid. You must be getting bored by now. This is the fan fluid room sealed. Again, guys, needs to terminate outside. This is where our products of combustion exit the boiler. This is where our air goes in for combustion. So again, this is a low water content non-condensing combi boiler. It does not require any ventilation for cooling or for the combustion air. So it's room sealed, fan flued, uh, low water content non-condensing combi boiler. So give it its full name. Now, BS5440 classifies its gas appliances according to its flue type. So this is the sheet you will be looking at. This is normally in your trading manual or you can find it in 5440. Now, what they're saying is, if you look here, a type A appliance is a flueless appliance. If we look here, it says a natural draft A1. We've got fan downstream of the heat exchanger is an A2. And we've got fan upstream of the heat exchanger is an A2. Now, depending on those appliances will depend whether it's an A1, A2 or A3. Now, if you look at B, appliance B, they are open fluid appliances. So a B2 is without a draft diverter, previously referred to as a closed flue. Um, we've got a B21 is a natural draft, a B22 is a fan, and so on and so on. Then type C appliances are room sealed appliances. So you can see here there are far more uh, room sealed appliances than there are open fluid or flueless. 
taking a look at, um, if you look at C11, it's a horizontal balance flue inlet air ducts to outside. A C11 is a natural draft. So the first boiler we looked at with the big box on the back is a C11. Okay, so that's how you would classify the flues according to British Standards 5440 Part 1. Now before we get started, I want to talk about adventitious air and what is it? Well basically, adventitious air is all the air what's naturally in a room, what comes through windows, doors, through the floors, down from the ceilings, through cracks in the walls. So adventitious air is within a room. So what they say is, that houses built before 2008 would have adventitious air. Houses built after 2008 should have uh, insulation in the floors and the walls, in the ceilings and the double glazing, triple glazing. So they're saying houses built after 2008 should not have adventitious air. Or houses even renovated after 2008 should not have adventitious air. So what did, how did they come up with this? Well, basically what they say is, every gas appliance, open fluid gas appliance this is, requires five centimeters squared per kilowatt net of the appliance heat input. Okay, not the output, the input. So this is where this five comes from. And what they've worked out is we need each room built before 2008 would have 35 centimeters squared of adventitious air in there. So they've worked out that this first seven kilowatts is free. So an open fluid appliance, not a flueless appliance, because flueless appliances work off the size of the room. Okay, but this is for open fluid appliances. They say first seven kilowatts is free unless the manufacturer says so and the house is built or renovated before 2008. Okay, so they're the important things. So, adventitious air, seven kilowatts is free. Seven times five is 35 centimeters squared. So adventitious air is 35 centimeters squared per kilowatt net of the appliance heat input. Okay, now let's try and put this into some calculations so you can see it in action. Well, let's have a look at this first example and try and understand this adventitious air and where it comes into. Now, what we have here is a room, and in this room is an open fluid boiler. That boiler is 30 kilowatt gross. Now, on the appliance data badge, it will tell you what the kilowatts heat input and output of this boiler is. Now, we're looking at the heat input, remember. Now, if it doesn't tell you it's a net figure, assume it's a gross figure, okay? So before 2000, um, when they revised the um, ventilation, all the appliances were figured in gross. After 2000, they put it in net. But if it doesn't tell you the net figure, assume it's gross. Okay, so it's 30 kilowatt gross. So we've got a bit of calculations here. So what we've got is a 30 kilowatt gross boiler. But what we have to do is turn it to net now. So since 2000, we've had to use the net figure for working out ventilation. So 30 divided by 1.11. Now 1.11, which is 11%, um, turns our gross figure into net figure. Now, the, basically the difference between gross and net is the uh, net is 11% of the gross, okay? So basically what they say is the latent heat coming from the, the combustion process, 11% of it isn't used, okay? So we don't need to use that in the ventilation process. So 30 divided by 1.11 is 27.02 kilowatts. So we're not using 30 kilowatts, that's the gross figure, that is the kilowatts and that is net, so the net figure, because that's what we're looking for. So if it tells you it's a gross figure, you must turn it to net. If it tells you it's a net figure, you don't need to turn it into gross, okay? You don't need to times it by 1.11, which would turn it into a gross figure. So we've now got 27.02, and we can now minus seven. Remember, this seven is our adventitious air, because it's in a room, not a compartment, it's in a room. So, 20.25 now, because we're minus seven, times five, because we need five centimeters squared per kilowatt of free air, gives us 135.13 centimeters squared of free air. 
okay? But total needed, we would round it up to 136 centimetres squared because where are you going to find that figure there, there? Now, this is what we would do on site for any exams, for you guys doing exams, you would be looking at using this figure rather than that figure, okay? And just a word of warning, you only round up the final figure never round up all these figures as you do in the calculation or it will put you out. So you only round up the final figure to give you this figure. So that is working out ventilation for an open fluid appliance in a room with adventitious air. Let's have a look at some more. Okay, we've got two scenarios here. This is now the room, but the boilers are installed in compartments, so this is slightly different. So this is an open flue boiler installed in a compartment. Now, this is taking its air from combustion from within the room, and this one is taking its air from combustion from outside. So we're going to look at these two differently. Now, this one only needs two vents, this one needs three vents. So first of all, let's have a look at vent number one and size that one first, okay? Now then, the boiler is a 24 kilowatt gross boiler. So we do 24 gross open fluid boiler in a compartment. So 24 divided by 1.11, remember to turn gross to net, we need to divide by 1.11, is 21.62 kilowatts net. 21.62 kilowatts net minus seven, because remember seven is for adventitious air, seven kilowatts is free, we get 14.62 kilowatts net. 14.62 kilowatts net times five, because we need five centimeters squared of free air per kilowatt when it's coming from a room, gives us a total of 73.10 centimeters squared, and we would round that up to 74 centimetres squared of free air. Okay, so that's how we would size vent one in this scenario. Let's have a look at vents two and three now. Now let's just have a look at this formula for an open fluid appliance in a compartment shown in this table below. So you can see we've got high and low level vents. So if we run across, if the air is coming from the room, which is the next two we're going to do, we need to times it by 10 and 20 instead of 5. So because we need 20 centimetres squared per kilowatt or 10 centimetres squared per kilowatt for complete combustion. Now, the reason why it's double at the bottom than the top is the vent at the bottom will allow air in for combustion as well as cooling and the vent at the top is solely there for cooling purposes so that's why it's double again if we were taking it direct for outside which of the next ones we're going to be looking at we're going to be times in it by five and by ten again it's double at the bottom than it is at the top because this is for combusted air and cooling and this is for cooling purposes only it still brings in combustion air but it's mainly for cooling so this is a chart you would be going for for the positions of the air vents or centimeter squared per kilowatt we're going to be using instead of five so let's go and have a look at it again on the book now we've had a look at the chart so let's put this into some kind of text so let's have a look so let's take a, again we've got this it's a 24 kilowatt um, gross boiler fitted in the compartment now we're looking at vent two, so we're looking at this top vent here. So remember, the top vent is for cooling. So according to here, we need to times it by 10. So we do 24 divided by 1.11, because remember, we still need the net figure is uh, 21.62. We do 21.62 times 10. Now we do not minus seven this time. Minus seven is only for a room for advantageous air in a compartment or a cupboard. We do not minus a seven. Okay, so we times it by 10, which is 216.20 centimeters squared. Okay, now if we look at vent three down here, we're times in it by 20. So number three, again, it's 21.62 because it's 24 divided by 1.11 is 21.62. And now we're doing it by 20. The reason why it's double, like I just said, is because this allows combustion air in 
as well as cooling. So it gives us 432.4 centimetres squared. So for a compartment going into a room, we require three vents. We need one at the top and then we need top and bottom vents. Now the reason why we put this vent at the top and not at the bottom down here is because it stops the customer blocking the vent up. Now the biggest problem I've ever had on jobs where I've gone to open fluid appliances is this vent being blocked. And the reason why the vent's blocked is because it's put low down and it blows cold air right across them while they're watching TV so they block the vent. If you put the vent at the top, it aids convection with the heat and stops the customer blocking the vent because it's too much trouble and it's not blowing the cold air across their legs. Okay, so try never to install a vent low down at the bottom, try and install them at the top. Okay, but we'll talk about these vents top and bottom soon, so we'll have a look at that soon. Now let's have a look at vents four and five. Now let's have a look at these vents here, vents four and five. So look at the difference. Now this is going to outside, not via a room, so we only need two vents top and bottom. Again, this time vent number five at the bottom is times it by 10 centimetres squared and vent number four is um, times it by five centimetres squared of free air. Okay, so these are the two vents we're looking at. Remember, we only need two vents if we're going direct to outside. So let's have a look at the math. So, vent four, 24 times five. Now this time it's net. It's a 24 kilowatt net boiler not a gross one, so we don't need to divide by the 1.11, it's already been done. So 24 times 5 is 120 centimetres squared of free air for the top vent, and 24 times 10 is 240 centimetres squared for the bottom vent. Remember, bottom ones for combustion, air, as well as cooling, the top ones just for cooling. So it's a 24 kilowatt net boiler going flue in outside rather than flowing through a room okay so we're losing all that heat in the room to outside so that's four and five vents let's move on to some more now this scenario is slightly different what we've got is a boiler an open fluid boiler installed in a room but it actually passes through two rooms to get to it okay now this isn't a compartment this is a room so we require three vents, okay? So slightly different. So let's have a look at vent one. It's 24 kilowatt net, remember, okay? So we do 24, because it's already a net figure, minus seven, because seven's for the advantageous air, is 17, times five, gives us a total of 85 centimeters square. So vent one, will be 85 centimetres squared. Now, vents two and three are done slightly different now, okay? Two and three, because they're passing through one room to another, needs to be 50% larger than vent one. What do we mean by that? Well, this is the way I do it. Dyslexic in both feet, struggle with maths, easiest way I can do it. I do 85 divided by two, okay because that's your 50% is 42.5 then 42.5 plus the 85 gives us a total of 127.5 centimeters squared of free air that's for vents two and three they're both the same figure okay so why do we do that well basically what they're saying is because of adventitious air and because of heat and all the rest of it this air could become quite stagnant or get blocked by furniture but we still need it to pass through to the next room to go through to the boiler so that's why we make them 50 percent larger okay now another thing we need to be aware of is the height we can install these vents on the inside okay so the maximum height we can go with the top of the vent is 450 millimeters and that's off the floor Okay, we can't go more than 450. Now the reason why we do that is to stop the spread of smoke in case of a fire. 
because the fire, the smoke would go high up. If you put the vents up here and here, it would spread the smoke away uh, through it through. Whereas this way, the oxygen would be going down at the bottom. So that's why we don't put them more than 450. Now, a vent outside is a bit different again. If we did a low vent, and remember, <laughs> we shouldn't put the vents low down, the minimum height off the floor to the bottom of the vent is 300 millimetres. And that's outside only. Not inside, that's outside only. Okay, so the high up vent is always the best one because they don't block it. But if you have to do put a vent down at the bottom, just remember the bottom of the vent can't be lower than 300 mil off the floor. And the inside vent can't be more than 450 to the top of the vent. Okay, now really, you know, you really need to concentrate on that comes up in the exams all the time so just be aware of that so that is a 24 kilowatt net boiler where the flu passes through two rooms it could pass through 10 rooms okay not that you want to but it could do and you only increase the rest of the vents by 50 percent bigger than the first vent outside okay so that's taking a look at vents passing through rooms The last thing in part one I want to look at before we move on to other appliances in part two is how do we size these vents once we've worked out the centimetre squared required. Now there are loads of different types of vents out there but most of them are not gas vents. They need to be specific vents for gas appliances. Things like terracotta um, vents now are no good because the holes on the front are bigger than the vent holes at the back so that causes particular problems when we're sizing them so if they've been installed and the cavity has been completely bridged and you can measure them by using a special gauge then they can leave them safe as long as the appliance is past its flu flow test and spillage now there are things like closable vents which are allowed on gas appliances okay so they're not allowed to close and they can't have fly screens in them as well okay so this uh, this vent here actually has it's closable and it's got a fly screen in there so it's restricting the flow of air coming into the room now the size of the holes inside the vent cannot be smaller than five millimeters okay if they're smaller than five millimeters they say they can be blocked by debris and insects and stuff like that and they also can't be bigger than 10 millimeters because that will let vermin in and stuff like that so the size of the minimum size of the hole will be five and the maximum will be 10. if we look at these a bit closely you can see they're angled okay so when we do come to measure the vents we need to use a steel rule and we need to angle the steel rule to the correct angle and measure inside the vent okay we also need to measure across there as well and we times them by each other Just going to do a quick example to show you exactly how we size these vents now this is the vent we're going to be sizing basically it, it, it has um, four eight twelve sets of holes the holes are a hundred millimeters long and five millimeters across the size of the hole remember they won't be smaller than five millimeters Okay, so we need to turn it to centimetres first. So we've got 10 centimetres times 0.5 centimetres is 5 centimetres. 5 times 12, because there are 12 holes, gives us 60 centimetres squared. So it's 60 centimetres squared of free air. Now from that 60 centimetres squared now, we could work out and see whether the actual vent is the correct size. 
Now, what they also say is, if the vent is within 90% of the required ventilation and it passes a flu flow test and spillage, the appliance, it's deemed safe. If it's got less than 90%, in our unsafe situations procedure, it's deemed at risk, okay? And if it fails its flu flow test and spillage, it's deemed immediately dangerous, okay? So for ventilation, that's how we work out the size of the vent. And from the vent we've got, we can see now whether our appliance is correct on that. Now then, that is the end of part one on this um, little mini series we're doing on ventilation. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you like this video, why don't you give us a thumbs up or leave a constructive comment below. If I've caught up and with my maths, because I am dyslexic in both feet, then why don't you leave a comment and tell me I have and then we'll have a look at it. Okay, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, get subscribing and don't forget to click on that notification bell or even share our stuff to everybody else. You can also follow us on Facebook, on Twitter and all the other social media things we've got flying around. So look out for number two in uh, next Wednesday. Look forward to seeing you soon. Cheers.